Hi, welcome back to the channel. We're in the garage today. We've got some maintenance tasks to do, and uh, one of them is quite important. And I thought I should video it and share it with you today. Now, I did go on an electrical. Um, well, it was it was a van builders workshop that predominantly covered electrical installation, but it also covered gas installation, covered storage of batteries, um, solar panel, all them good things that we all have in our vans. Very informative course. I will put a link up here or up here, whichever corner I can. I can never remember which one it goes in. So I'll put a link to the course um, that we've done, that we attended and we took part in. Very informative. Lots of great people on there. And we're coming back to Carlisle on is it March the 29th? I'll, I'll put a date down here. I guarantee I'll put a date down here. Anyway, if you want to come on that course. I'll, I'll try and link it all up for you. It's it's worth doing. It's very informative, and you can ask any questions you like. If you've got a problem with your own system, or there's something you don't understand about your own system or your own build, there's an opportunity to discuss that as well. So, run by James, very informative guy, and uh, if I'm there, I'll give you my little bit as well on van weight and all the rest of it. But yeah, maintenance time. So, survive January, the 100 days of January, the 100 storms of January, and uh, <laughs> it's time to get back into it. Now, while I was on that course, I kind of like, I need to put my hand up. My van currently isn't to rigs, and as some of you know, I am an electrical engineer, and it's a job I've been meaning to do, but I just never got round to it. There's always one of them jobs, isn't there? So, this week, I'm changing out all my MCBs for double pole MCBs and I'm putting in the correct RCD. So I'll take you through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. It's an important job. Um, it's just one of them. When I built the van, I put in what I could afford at the time. And when you're starting your van, it's a great expense. And at the time, I probably didn't do as much research as I should. I just thought, yeah, I know what that needs to go in there. And I put it in. Don't get me wrong, I've tested it. It all works fine. But I hadn't considered a couple of things. And this is me being honest with you. As products develop and as technology develops, the safety devices that are made available to us are far better than we've ever had. So if you're building a van now, I would make sure that you're up to the current regs because if you're not when, when you're building that van at that point in time if you're not compliant with the regs your van isn't probably isn't insured or if you had an electrical fire or there was an, in, an incident with your electrical system your insurance company might not pay out and that's the top and bottom of it and that's why I'm doing it uh, my insurance policy is up for renewal next month and I was just flicking through some documentation and I started questioning is it Am I compliant with current regs? I know I'm not, but am I insured still if I don't do this? So I am going to go out, swap them out today. I'll, like I say, I'll take you through it with us. Okay, let's run through our electrical installation quickly. There's our input, shore power, mains power, 230, whatever you want to call it. That's where that goes. That then comes through into this changeover switch which feeds our distribution. That's the 230 side of it. So, the changeover switch also controls our power from our inverter. As you can see there, position one is inverted because that's what we run it on most of the time. Inverter isolator is there. Inverter is there under the front seat. Battery is there, that's a Roma 230 under seat unit, and our battery isolator is there. All our DC and MPPT are located under the seat. Got a little local distribution board in there, two isolators, and some fuses. And that is our system. Inside the van, we've got 230, we've got 12 volt, obviously, got our lighting controls as well. And this is our controller for our inverter. It, it basically, we can turn it on and off here and it shows us the battery levels. That's that. 
got the 230 socket down there. We've also got 230 that runs to the microwave and the fridge. And then we have some sockets, put the light on, up here for the TV. And this is probably where we'll charge up our laptop and stuff like that. That is our system. So through the van we have 12 volts dotted at convenient places just for charging items. But we've got them up here as well. There's a light switch. So we've got one here that powers um, our... doesn't power this, it powers our dash cam, which is behind our big reversing camera as well. So plenty of power distribution throughout the van. I've even added one down there in the glove box, just to the side. Can't really see it from there, can you? So we've got one there, and I've got one on the other side as well. Just very handy. That is our electrical system. Let's go through what's actually wrong with my setup. Wrong RCD and wrong MCBs. Let's just run through it quickly. So this RCD is a basic, it's a domestic RCD one you put in your house and obviously it works when we're plugged into the shore power but we don't always plug into the shore power. We have the option to use an inverter and this is the option that we use all the time. So we're creating our power from DC. Um, so this, the power we create has a different sine wave to the power that we get off from um, AC from mains. So basically we need to change it out to a type A RCD that will operate for either on a, an inverter supply or from the main supply. Quick and simple change out that. What's wrong with the MCBs? They should really be double pole and this is to make you compliant with um, the regs. So basically one of the big problems that used to occur on caravan parks and uh, abroad is that you get reverse polarity and you wouldn't get the level of protection that you need so by putting um, double pole MCBs in you are obviously protecting yourself a little bit better these are overcurrent devices so if if, if you were to plug into a, a reverse polarity feed um, these might not operate as they should by putting it on a double pole it will operate if you if you go over the prescribed current say it's six amp if you were to pull seven um, quite quickly it would trip and, and, and operate so that's the reasoning behind all that makes you compliant with the regs and also protects you from, from your insurance company because this is probably one of the first things to look at if you get a fire the probably company fuse board makes sure that you've got all the right protective equipment and it's selected correctly. Currently mine isn't, um, and like I said before, I've just done what I did at the time. Never really gave it a lot of thought, but the more I've got into this, the more I've realised this all needs changed out. So that's what we're going to do next. So this is the equipment we're installing. This is a 25 amp Type A RCD unit. Now, the logo there, that little icon, has a, that shows you two sine waves. So basically, I don't want to overcomplicate this, but basically AC has a different sine wave to DC, and even with DC you can get smooth DC and pulsating DC. This RCD will protect you from both, but it'll only protect you on the smooth DC up to around about 6 milliamp, and once it exceeds that threshold this would trip. So if you needed, if you had a smooth DC system, you would also put a, you would probably put a Type B in. But for now, this covers everything we needed to do, and is what I need to put in my van. These are double pole MCBs. So this is what should protect us from reverse polarity, and uh, quite neat. I like it. Most double pole units are this size. Now I went with the chin because it is so compact. Still does the same job, but it's what people prefer, you know. What do you like? I like nice, compact 
installations. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to put it today. Um, I seem to have mislaid one. I've got five MCBs in here currently. I've only got four of them. Now I need to check my order. I'm sure I ordered, ordered five. But did I use one on somebody else's? Maybe I did. I can't remember. Before you start doing any work on electrical systems, make sure it's all isolated. So I installed this green neon light here to indicate if we ever had power. And that is on the outgoing leg. So whatever feeds this board is indicated there. Don't rely on that light though. We will test it and prove it before we go any further. But for me, I know I've isolated it that end and uh, I'm quite happy to work on this system. But before you do anything, prove it's dead. Right, let's get this stripped out. Right, before we go any further, I've just got a proof of dead. So we've got a multimeter there. Currently set on AC. There's no voltage there. That's that's 0.7 millivolts, that's <laughs> way low. That's probably just interference off the cables. But anyway, I'm happy, no voltage there. Invest in a good multimeter. We'll never question yourself in the future. Let's swap these out. Out. <laughs> as well as adding all my new breakers in I've actually bought some buzz bar this is BB01 and it's designed to fit this type of breaker so I bought a meter of that comfortable about it should have been 30 quid it was on offer about a meter for 13 quid so basically it makes all them little connections on the bottom a lot tidier I'm happy with that just need to replace I just need to replace that plastic um, I marked it yesterday so before I put it all together I'm going to inspect that if there's no damage to it I'll, I'll leave it in but if there is damage to it on where it goes right through well I've got a meter of this stuff I'm just going to swap it out I'll just put a new piece on there but yeah all ready to go in I'll go and screw that all in now okay that's everything swapped out I have had to order one more breaker um, so while I was on I'm going to change out the um, the, the 6 for a 10 just in case that's a little bit too low I can't remember how I can't remember if that's going to be big enough <laughs> um, I got that for something else so basically I've done another job for somebody else I've used the two 10 amps that I wanted um, and to be honest with you, I need to I need to have a little look, uh, see which job I did use it on. I've got a good idea where I used it, but um, I haven't replaced it. So this is my stuff. This was my stock to do this job. But anyway, we're all right for now. Last job to do is test the system, which we'll do. We need to screw that back on because that fell off. But yeah, that is us. All compliant again. See my boy, see if he's got a job for these. Because I haven't. <laughs> there you go, that was a quick little job, but a very important one. We're now compliant again with uh, with the current regs. Insurance should pay out if anything does go wrong. But that's, that's the crux of the matter, isn't it? You know, we've got to do the best we can to stay on the right side of the law, the right side of our insurance companies as well. If you decide you are going to tackle your own electrical system, I recommend that you get one of these. This is a multimeter. Um, it'll do 230, it'll do DC. It'll do everything you need it to do. Get one of these, learn how to use it, and uh, just prove what you're doing is safe. Um, it's great for fault finding, great for proving voltages. You should have one of these in your toolbox. Plug top tester is exactly what it sounds like. You plug it in, switch it on, and if everything's right, you'll get three lights. But it, 
This one has another function. Takes out the RCD as well. So that'll check to make sure that your RCD is working. There you go, back on. Life server. Yeah. Socket. Top tester. Plug top tester. Whatever you want to call it. Great bit of kit. That combined with a multimeter, you're on to the winner. I'm glad that job's done. That was one of them little jobs that I haven't been putting off. I've just never got round to doing. It was, it's on a long list of jobs I've never got round to doing. But I'm happy that's done. I've got a couple of little um, electrical jobs to do at the front. I've got a little board to replace. Um, one of the connections come loose and it got really hot. Didn't catch fire. I could smell it. Um, tighten everything back up. But it has damaged around the area where the fuse, um, where the fuse located and that was the one for the um for the inverter so i need to go and sort that out um i'm going to put that on its own fuse run it straight to the buzz bar um take it out the little distribution the little link bar that i had um but yeah just one of them little jobs lots of them little jobs that you just need to get done but never get round to doing anyway that's done happy safe in the knowledge that that's fixed now um just waiting for one more to come, one more fuse to come. <laughs> anyway, let's get this locked up, I think. Right, that's us finished. Last job to do is get that tested by my son. He's got all the equipment, so I'll get him in, make sure the RCD is performing as it should be, uh, measure out all the circuits, make sure we're there within the tolerances. And that's it, get a cert off him as well. We'll keep that handy. But like I say, if you don't feel confident or you're not competent on working on your 230 electrical system, there's plenty of lads out there that will look after you. There's plenty of good teams operating in, up and down the country. Like I say, I'll put a link to James's company in the, in the, link, in the description below. Any queries, contact them guys. They'll try and look after you as best they can. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you again. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.